I'm Beverly Kirk in Washington. U.S. investigators head to Yemen after an apparent terrorist attack against a U.S. naval ship. I'll have the latest coming up. And the latest on the crisis in the Mideast. This and more now on Nightcast. You're watching KFBX. Live with Texoma's 24-hour news team. This is News Center 3 Nightcast. Good evening, I'm Carrie Hinkle. And I'm Doug Billy. Our top story tonight, U.S. investigators are headed to Yemen after an apparent terrorist attack against a Navy ship. The Pentagon says at least six sailors are dead, more than 30 others injured, and at least 11 missing in the explosion that ripped a large hole in the USS Cole. President Clinton says the U.S. will find out who's responsible and hold them accountable. Beverly Kirk has the latest from Washington. Good evening. An apparent suicide bombing takes the lives of U.S. sailors on board the USS Cole, and it may be one of the worst attacks ever on a naval ship. These are the first pictures of some of the injured sailors from the USS Cole, shown here being treated at a hospital in Yemen. The Pentagon says a small boat helping the ship moor for a refueling exploded, ripping a 20 by 40 foot hole in the side of the $1 billion ship. I have no reason to think that this was anything but a senseless act of terrorism. FBI agents and other U.S. officials are headed to the region to collect evidence and investigate before officially labeling the incident a terrorist attack. We will find out who was responsible and hold them accountable. If their intention was to deter us from our mission of promoting peace and security in the Middle East, they will fail utterly. The State Department says it should soon have forensic results from the explosion. Meantime, in Ennis, Texas, the family of 21-year-old Tim Guyana is awaiting word on his fate. He's one of the missing. I'm trying to be strong for my kid. I need to be strong for Tim. This family, one of many tonight, hoping and praying their sons and daughters on the USS Cole are all right. Some U.S. officials believe the attack was well-planned, with those responsible being tipped off in advance of the Cole schedule. In Washington, Beverly Kirk, News Center 3. The attack occurred even though U.S. forces in the region were and still are in a heightened state of alert. Defense Secretary William Cohen says protecting against this type of incident would be difficult, if not impossible. Tonight, the U.S. State Department is warning American tourists to stay out of Israel after another day of violence there. Tonight, President Clinton is working the phones, his goal, a ceasefire. Israeli helicopters are attacking Palestinian targets, including Yasser Arafat's seaside compound. That's after three Israeli soldiers are beat to death today. President Clinton says the peace progress is in tatters. The alternative to the peace process is now no longer merely hypothetical. It is unfolding today before our very eyes. Chairman Arafat told President Clinton by phone he too deplores the mob attack, but Israel's government now wants the president to publicly shame Arafat for turning his back on peace. Texoma Congressman Mac Thornberry says he's closely watching the crisis in the Middle East, and he says it could affect the economy here in the U.S. in the form of higher gas prices. Thornberry says the U.S. relies heavily on oil from the Mideast, so prices at the pump could begin to fluctuate. And it tends to have an upward pressure on the price of oil, uh, and of course that increases the, the price not only of gasoline and other fuels, but, uh, but uh, uh, various fuels that people use to heat their homes. Uh. Thornberry says the United States should continue to broker a deal between the Palestinians and the Israelis to create peace. As Democratic contender agrees, Curtis Kleinsmith says the U.S. must appraise the situation before acting in the Middle East. He says the safety of the U.S. troops in that part of the world are his number one concern. Another troubling development this time in Ecuador. Six Americans were kidnapped early this morning. The biggest guerrilla organization in Colombia is claiming responsibility. The Americans were on a helicopter in an Amazon oil field when an armed group hijacked the chopper. Two Frenchmen, a Chilean and an Argentinian, were also on board. Ecuador's vice president says the attack is in retaliation for an anti-narcotics effort backed by a billion dollars in U.S. aid. The U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration is considering making red phosphorus a controlled chemical. The chemical is used in a new way of making methamphetamines. New Center 3's Crystal Barons has the details. A new way of producing methamphetamine may make it even harder for police to stop. 
Authorities are already having a hard time cracking down on so-called portable Nazi meth labs. Officer Mike Phillips says anyone can recognize a cook if they know what to look for. Uh, they use the AA batteries. They're actually putting battery acid in this thing, so someone has tons of batteries floating around, the smaller size batteries. Uh, they use a lot of mason jars to mix it up in. They use plastic containers, wooden spoons. Uh, they don't want to get metal to touch any of this, so it's usually plastic and some glass and, and wooden things to stir it with. The ingredients for Nazi meth are readily available, and the labs are extremely mobile. But in parts of California, the producers are able to make larger amounts of meth by using red phosphorus. And because the ingredients don't have to be cooked over flame, there's less odor and it's harder to detect. Officer Mike Phillips says this method of cooking is dangerous and explosive. Uh, that in itself is extremely dangerous as a volatile substance. It's dangerous for people that are around that. But they're using that in, in lieu of other materials now. The U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration is gathering information on red phosphorus and considering making the chemical controlled to help curb the illicit production of methamphetamine. Crystal Barron's New Center 3. Officer Phillips says they haven't seen this type of lab here in Wichita Falls yet, but they do believe it will make its way to Texoma. Officer Phillips says it's just a matter of time. A fatal accident near Lake Arrowhead State Park this afternoon. One person is dead after two cars collided head-on. It happened on West Arrowhead Drive. DPS officials say Brody Borden was driving his 1985 Buick Skylark on the wrong side of the road. He then hit Reba Sosby in her Buick Park Avenue head-on. Officials say Bourne died at the scene and Sosby was taken to United Regional's 11th Street campus. No word on why Bourne's car was on the wrong side of the road. Police say they do not know if alcohol was a factor. Sosby was wearing a seatbelt. DPS officials say they're not sure if Bourne was strapped in, though. A man is in critical condition after being shot in the head while driving down a Houston highway. But what's even stranger, he was driving a truck full of pot. Investigators say suspects forced away bystanders who were trying to help. 600 pounds of marijuana were hidden in the truck, an estimated street value of $360,000. The suspects are still on the loose. P Arlington police are still searching for a robber, but the catch is he doesn't use weapons. Instead, he uses a scare tactic. He's hit four businesses in the last two weeks. In two of them, he's been caught on tape. Police say he's verbally abusive and uses a lot of profanity to scare clerks into submission. In all, four robberies that he's made off with cash. If you're an elector resident, the new chief of police says you can expect to see some new things from his department. Two weeks after taking the position, 51-year-old Rob Hanzel says he's already feeling at home and excited about the change. To move to a community-based, proactive, problem-solving police department. I want to uh, get away from the old standard model of policing, which is completely reactive into a proactive mode. Uh, I want the people to know that this is their police department and we work for them and if they need us, we're here. Chief Onzel and his wife have four kids, their youngest, 15 months old. He says once they sell their house in Ganado, Texas, they're looking forward to a life in Electra as Tigers. Texas and Oklahoma have finally officially drawn the line. The Oklahoma Contingency Review Board approved the long-disputed border line across Lake Texoma yesterday. The border is believed to be the last disputed portion of the boundary between our two states. The Red River Boundary Compact says the vegetation line along the Red River is the official border in Lake Texoma. The line will follow the submerged river bed, something we could definitely use around here. Any chance of rain in our future? Skip will be in next with the answer to that question. And then after weather, a warning about a popular arthritis drug, some side effects you may want to know about. And later in sports, the District 5 4A opener. Burke and Ryder meet for a little Thursday night football. Stay with us. You're watching KFDX News Center 3, the one station to bring you the spirit of Texoma. Close captioning is brought to you by the law offices of Monty J. White and Associates. Union Square Credit Union Tower Cam 3. It's mostly cloudy to cloudy across Texoma. In Wichita Falls at 74, 56% humidity. South Southeast winds at 14, a barometer 3009 and rising. Pollen count at 32, most port zero. The question is, where's the rain? The answer is, I'll show you in just a moment. The high this afternoon, 83 degrees, a record high 98 in 1979. 35, the record low in 1977. We had a 62 and 54, 79, those being the averages. Four stars right over, oh, <laughs> let me try that again. 
Four stars auto ranch weather watcher. See, I can say it. 80s across the area today, with the exception of Quanta at 76, Monday at 78. Everyone else set between 80 and 82 to 83 degrees. Tonight, temperatures have dropped into the 60s and the 70s, with Quanta at 67, 68 at Archer City, 68 in Duncan, 72 at Lawton, 73 at Warica, and 70 at Jacksboro. Again, all of this occurring under cloudy to mostly cloudy skies. But as I said, where's the rain, you ask? Well, look at these bright white clouds out here to the north and to the southwest. Those are showers and thunderstorms developing and moving off to the northeast. The front is still back in New Mexico. And again, as I said earlier tonight, that's not bad news because the moisture continues to move up this ridge that's been sitting here on the surface not to be confused with the ridge that set over us in the upper level of the atmosphere for eight weeks, has actually uh, moved a little bit and weakened, and that's allowing moisture to stream back northward. And later on tonight, we're going to see some of that get into the area again through the day tomorrow as well, because we're going to have gusty south winds at 15 to 25. But these showers and thunderstorms are just beginning to get formed and start to move off to the northeast. And what they're going to continue to do as the night goes on is do what this area is doing right here. Look how it's building up. And we've got some more down here to the west and southwest of Midland. All of these are going to be moving to the northeast at about 20 to 25 miles an hour. The slower the front moves, the better our chances for rain over the next day or two. I know a lot of folks have got plans on Saturday. It looks like as slow as this front's moving, it may be Sunday morning before the front clears the area and takes a chance of rain with it. That we don't mind at all. These lows have actually slowed the front down. And like I said, that just allows moisture to get back into Texoma. High pressure on the east coast, very nice. Scattered light rains through the uh, Rockies and out to the west coast. This front is eventually going to come through us about Tuesday, but it's going to be fairly weak. Still, though, it could give us a chance of rain. The front should be still to our west tomorrow, and that may be too far. It may actually be backed up just beginning to come into west Texas. The movement on that's a little bit flaky because it's not moving very fast at all. But rain chances are still in the forecast. In fact, we've got a slight chance of showers toward morning. Uh, it won't be as widespread or as heavy as they could be later in the day, Friday night. Friday night football could be wet. And into Saturday, cloudy, low 60s, south winds at 10 to 20. Sunrise in the morning at 737, gusty winds 15 to 25. That's good, brings moisture up. Cloudy skies by noon about 66. Continued slight chance of showers. Could turn into some thunder showers and thunderstorms by the late afternoon, mid 70s, cloudy skies, south winds at 15 to 20 and gusty. And then for the five day period, uh, again, we could see some rain in on Sunday, depending on how fast the front mo moves through the area. Best chance of rain looks like it's going to be Friday night into Saturday and start to taper off Sunday morning. But you'll notice temperatures stay on the mild side for the simple reason that this air is coming from, in part, coming from Mexico mm -hmm. or the southern Rockies, and it's just not cold out there. So Can we're we not going to... 70s straight through the winter? Because I could live with that. Well, that wouldn't be nice. I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, you can 70s in rain. I'll be willing to lay odds. That isn't going to happen. <laughs> anyway. But we've got a chance of rain next day or two. Good, Good thanks. Thanks. He's a Nobel Prize winner in literature, but he's been kicked out of his homeland. We'll have details coming up. Stay with us. More than 1,000 people are successfully rescued from a burning ship at sea near the Philippines. The fire reportedly broke out on the upper deck, but officials are still not sure what started it. Now, some passengers jumped into the sea to escape. They were picked up by rescue boats. Officials say there were only minor injuries. The ferry was on a regular route from General Santos City to Manila when the fire broke out. Three people are seriously injured after two boats collide. The accident happened about two miles east of Beach Haven, New Jersey. The Coast Guard was alerted by a pleasure craft that it had been in a serious collision with another boat. A 50-foot Viking yacht ran over a smaller boat. The small boat had four passengers on board. Two were immediately recovered. Another was rescued a short time later. An extensive rescue operation continued late into the day. The winner of this year's Nobel Peace Prize for Literature says no one in his own country will ever read his work. Gao Xingjiang of China was just awarded the coveted prize. 
Gao survived the Cultural Revolution and is now a political refugee in France. He was awarded for his bitter insights and linguistic ingenuity, which he was forced to write in secret. Gao's own wife turned him in after reading his plays in China. Well, there's a new drug for MS patients tired of feeling tired. We'll explain next in HealthCast. back everybody imagine the smallest task leaving you exhausted unable to carry on without a few hours rest now there's a new drug that can help new center three's lisa weber joins us now to explain lisa very people with multiple sclerosis often feel extremely tired they're often forced to become dependent on others but now ms patients are gaining independence with a new drug for fatigue cheryl hillman now has energy to smell the roses fresh air and, and working close to nature is just something i've always enjoyed Oh, the yellow ones are so fragrant. Life is sweet thanks to a fatigue-fighting drug that helped this multiple sclerosis patient get out of a wheelchair and get back on her feet. The energy level was so different. I mean, I didn't have to go lay down for an hour or two during the day. Fatigue can be so incapacitating that you can't, once you get up in the morning, you can't get off the couch. White areas on this MRI scan show where MS attacks the brain. These are real markers for activity of the disease. It causes extreme fatigue in 75% of MS patients. Neurologist at Kaiser Permanente in San Diego discovered the drug modafinil used to treat the sleeping disorder narcolepsy can help. Of the 69% of patients that improved, 30% improved markedly. The drug has given Cheryl her energy back. Every day when I wake up, there's a good chance that I'm going to be able to just pretty much function normally that includes swimming prescribed therapy for ms patients like cheryl just getting in and out of the pool walking up and down the steps was very difficult a whole new world has opened up for me actually by having this drug a whole new world one step at a time a month's supply of modafinil costs 90 dollars and is covered by insurance doctors recommend the 200 milligram dose for ms patients lisa thank you very much Multiple sclerosis and arthritis patients taking the drug in Ebro, beware. The Seattle drug company Immunex delivers a warning about its popular arthritis drug. Immunex says some patients suffer complications when they take it. The company has talked with the FDA about the complications, especially in patients with multiple sclerosis. Immunex has also sent a warning letter to doctors. The letter advises physicians that Enbrel has been linked to serious anemia, particularly for patients with blood disorders. Five blood disorder patients taking an Ibrol have died. The company says any time a new medication is introduced, more information is learned about possible side effects as the medicine becomes more widely used. Well, here in Wichita Falls, it's been two years and two million dollars in the making, and today the Community Health Care Center celebrated the opening of their new home. The center offers health care for the insured and for what's known as the working uninsured. Patients without insurance are charged a sliding scale fee based on their income and the number of people in their house. The new facility has a bigger lab and pharmacy, expanded dental operations, and more space for doctors to see patients. Some patients with some heart attack symptoms probably after tonight's. <laughs> yeah, tonight's I think game. there's a few think? coaches that might need a little bit of help after tonight's Bird for Net Rider game. Boy, what a back and forth game. We'll have the highlights when we come back. DSL, the internet connection from Cyber Station. Always on, no dialing, no busy signal. Free modem, free installation. $45 a month residential from Cyber Station. You have voted Larry Slack and Bowie Texoma's best place to buy a new truck. First, let me say thank you. We are honored. Why would a dealership in Bowie, Texas be Texoma's best? Our customers say they like the way they're treated, and that's the bottom line. Of course, selling Ford, Dodge, and Jeep trucks and SUVs, then backing them with superior service helps too. Remember, $89 down delivers your new truck only at Larry Slack in downtown Bowie. On the next New Center 3 Early Edition. These beautiful fall days are great for getting outdoors and enjoying nature. Unless you suffer from allergies. Some people give in to the seasonal pollens and molds by staying indoors, but you don't have to. We'll have some tips to help you work around your allergies. Plus, we'll look back at a last-minute solution to the Iran hostage crisis in Time and Again 2000. That's on the next News Center 3 Early Edition at 6 a.m. Hamilton 
Brian will be closed up. Well, after getting off to an 0-3 start, things weren't exactly festive over at Ryder, but after back-to-back -back wins against Denton and Dallas Skyline, Ryder is riding a high heading into tonight's district opener against Burke Burnett. The Bulldogs also winners of two straight. First quarter, Burke with the ball. Ryan Matthews scrambling and brought down by Greg Hitchcock. Next possession for the Bulldogs. Fourth and one, they're going for it. And watch Matthews just stick the arm over right there. They get it. Two plays later, Matthews out of the shotgun, airs it out to Cody Caporale. Takes it in for the touchdown. They missed the PAT, but lead it six to nothing. Second quarter, snap to the fullback, too high, recovered by Mark Oatman for Ryder, but somewhere in the pile, Burke gets it, and the rest rule. Bulldog ball. Nothing doing. Next possession, Hitchcock with the sack. Then Hitchcock takes down Chip Richmond. Ryder finally knocking on the door thanks to Demarcus Lathan big run. Then Lathan takes it in for the score. But bad news, Blake Morris, the quarterback, left the game with a knee injury. And more bad news because Burke Burnett gets a 20-yard field goal with 25 seconds left and beats Ryder 20-17. to Only two teams have beaten Old High in the last 17 games. One is Canyon, the other is Hershey. Tomorrow night, the two will meet in their District 5-4A opener. Once again, the Coyotes enter the game undefeated and they're ranked number one in the state. But that doesn't mean a thing when bragging rights are on the line. We talked about it a few times, and, and, and the kids, uh, we didn't have to remind them of it. Uh, they remembered, to, re remembered it themselves. The ball game, and uh, we, we try to teach our kids that we kind of control what happens to us, and uh, the rest of that you know, really doesn't make much difference to us. We've got to go play the game. You can bet there's probably going to be a few people at this game tomorrow night, 7.30 out at the stadium, and we will, of course, have the highlights. Other big games going on, and there are a lot of them. Graham opening up a uh, district play against Iowa Park, only hosting Hamlin. Seymour at City View, that game in Burke Burnett. Quanah at Electra, Monday hosting Kroll. And Bryson in Newcastle in a battle of unbeatens in six-man. Well, the MSU football team is still riding high after their 20 to nothing beating of East Central. On Saturday, they'll host Oklahoma Panhandle State for homecoming. Panhandle's been on the losing end of a lot of games, but the Indians don't plan on underestimating them. You can't expect that much because of how they've been losing and stuff like that. But we do have respect for these guys because we don't want to go out and lose this game because because they are have done what they've done in the past. Really can't underestimate any team. But you know you want to do good too and make sure you know everybody knows that you know you get beat by a team that's getting beat up every week. So you want to you want to go to, to this team and make sure you do good. Hey, come on out for homecoming for Midwestern State. Eight o'clock start and eight o'clock start on Saturday out at Memorial Stadium. Well, the Dallas Cowboys are giving Troy Aikman another option today. The team activated receiver Damon Hodge from the practice squad. Hodge worked out with the team this summer in Wichita Falls. Now, to make room for Hodge, the Cowboys waived third-string quarterback Clint Sterner. After clearing waivers, Sterner returned to the Cowboys practice squad. Sterner was moved up more than a month ago to the playing roster when Troy Aikman suffered a concussion in the season-opening game against Philadelphia. Cowboys back in action this weekend after a week off taking on the Giants game time noon of course Cowboys two and three so far this season stars and flyers in action in Dallas first period we pick things up Yari Littinen from Daryl Sador kicks it in to put the stars up one nothing second period Brett Hull from Littinen Hull ties Mario Lemieux for eight all time 613 career goals but so much for that tie up to one Hull gets yet another goal and passes Lemieux all alone for eighth all time on career goals. 614 stars win it four to one. Not bad. Nope. Susan, thank you very much. We'll be right back, everybody. Tonight's sports on KFDX is brought to you by your local Dodge dealers. Only 15% of teen girls get enough calcium. They try to cut calories and they choose milk as a way of doing so. Everyone needs calcium up to age 30 to help build your bone mass, but you need calcium after age 30 to help maintain that bone mass. Osteoporosis is a disease where your bones become brittle. The number one thing you can do is to get enough calcium. Brahms fat-free milk is unique. It tastes better and it also has about 50% more calcium than grocery store milk. I always recommend Brahms for my patients. Right now at Wagoner Carpet One, no interest and no payments for one full year on all lease for living carpet. Nobody does carpet better than Wagoner Carpet One. 
Teenagers spent about $153 million last year, most of it in cash. Now there's a new card that lets kids shop and help learn the value of responsible spending at the same time. The Cobalt card from American Express is a stored value card designed to teach kids 13 and older the importance of financial responsibility. Now, it also allows parents of kids under 18 to track their child's spending. The card comes with educational materials, and American Express says it provides a safer alternative to cash. Something I could use. I probably need one of those for me. <laughs> I like cash myself. Yeah. I need well, I didn't think we going to see that for you. I like to spend on the card. Yeah. <laughs> time out. Time out. Breakfast forecast brought to you by Parnell. Very slight chance of a shower. Cloudy skies, 62 degrees. South winds at 15, 20. Chance of thunderstorms off and on all day long and into Saturday. All that for free. Resume. Resume. <laughs> Go ahead. Talk about how we don't have any money here. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the story of my life. And yeah, we don't have any time either. <laughs> That'll do it for us tonight. Have a good night.